Hello, this is Matthew Robert Payne and uh, this is a message called Is There a Better Way? And uh, we're going to have a look at uh, some of the scriptures in uh, the book of Acts. We're going to have a look at the early church and uh, just ponder the question uh, Is There a Better Way? Um, in Acts, uh, Acts chapter 2 um, Peter preaches uh, his famous uh, sermon after they were filled with the Holy Spirit and he goes on and identifies Christ as uh, the Saviour that has died and rose again and goes through and uh, shares who Jesus is and um, I've never seen it before until today um, but uh, it says um, in verse uh, 40 um, and then Peter continued preaching for a long time strongly urging all his listeners save yourself from this crooked generation those that believed Peter and were baptized added to that church that day was 3,000 and all what I want to draw your attention to and what I haven't seen before is then Peter continued preaching for a long time what's a long time folks? Is a long time 20 minutes and you're watching your watch at church and wondering when the sermon's going to finish? Um, is a long time 45 minutes that uh, your pastor may uh, preach a bit of a longer sermon? Or is a long time a few hours? Uh, for, for me, uh, the statement a long time is a few hours. I remember once in Acts, Paul was preaching from 12 midday and at 12 midnight someone fell out of the roof of, of the, uh, the group that was listening and we only know that story because Paul went down and raised the guy back from the dead then he continued preaching to 6 in the morning Paul preached an 18 hour sermon 18 hours now I know one thing about uh, hearing sermons that are long. The longest sermon I've listened to or teaching I've listened to was six hours and the guy was tremendously anointed. Uh, when you heard him speak uh, you really wanted to hear everything he had to say and uh, it, it was very encouraging and uh, very enlightening and you were hanging on every word he said and that's the anointing. Some people haven't got much of an anointing some people have but it was tremendous to listen to this guy for six hours but 18 hours uh, they listened to Paul and it says here in verse 40 then Peter continued preaching for a long time how long is a long time? I want to uh, underline that because uh, it talks uh, further where we're going to go uh, with this scripture uh, about the apostles teaching and was the apostles teaching like this was this uh, something uh, common about the apostles teaching it said uh, in Acts where Paul preached for 18 hours he said he kept on preaching because he had to leave the next day so he just wanted to fill the people up with a whole lot of information before he left and sailed away the next day so Peter can pull out an 18 hour sermon I bet the difference between uh, Pete, Paul, uh, Paul pulled out an 18 hour sermon, I bet uh, the difference between him and uh, our regular pastors that we have each day was that Paul preached out of his knowledge and wisdom through the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul didn't have a sermon with sermon notes and preach 18 hours with sermon notes. He preached from the unction and the leading of the Holy Spirit and he just went on making point after point after point after point and each of his points built on each other and showed each other, showed the people more depth and more depth. How do I know that? Because I've uh, one time preached uh, for two hours and, and um, it was just led by the Holy Spirit and uh, I didn't know I was going to preach what I did and I used a whole lot of verses that came up from my memory um, in the midst of the sermon and uh, it was amazing and um, so I know that it's possible 
Acts chapter 2 verse 42 all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and to the fellowship and sharing meals including the Lord's Supper and to prayer all of the believers devoted themselves to the apostles teaching now we've established that the apostles uh, with Paul's example preaching 18 hours and Peter's example preaching for a long time we've established that the apostles taught for quite a while they weren't uh, 20 minute vignettes vignettes or whatever they call that word they weren't uh, 20 minute uh, little sermons they, they were extensive uh, sermons and you'll see here that the believers devoted themselves to the apostles teaching they followed out and carried out and obeyed and lived their lives in such a way that they were in obedience to the apostles teaching now that's something that's different with the modern church the modern church listen to teacher and teacher and say that's nice and that's nice but how many people go on and apply what is being taught uh, why is it that we have this sort of superstar mentality these days with famous preachers but how many of you actually listen to a famous preacher and actually do what that preacher says rather than just saying gee that was a nice sermon uh, how many do you, how many of you actually do what is said and what is suggested and, and the, the difference with the people of that day is they applied themselves, they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and to fellowship how many of us are fellowshipping with each other? how many uh, of us spend each day together? how many of us Christians actually meet up each day? Um, and to fellowship with each other, sharing meals including the Lord's Supper and also to prayer a deep sense of awe came over all of them and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders there's another thing that's different we've got apostles that come here and there and uh, teachers that come here and there and do signs and wonders all around the world but how many of our teachers are doing signs and wonders actually in the church that we're in how many of us have got teachers around us that are performing signs and wonders and have got us in a sense of awe a deep sense of awe came a shock and reverence came over the people the, these, these apostles didn't just teach doctrine over the many hours that they taught that was established that they preached for a long time they didn't just teach doctrine but they actually healed people and, and did signs and wonders and to such a state that uh, it says in the Bible that a great sense of awe, a great sense of shock, a great sense of uh, reverence come over the people because of what the apostles were teaching and what the apostles were doing. Wouldn't it be great to have a miracle working teacher in each of our churches today? There's a difference between the early church and, and the church today the, the average pastor, the average uh, teacher in a church doesn't believe we can do signs and wonders anymore or doesn't believe he's got the gift of healing anymore I can't speak, I've only healed a, a, a two or three people in my life um, I haven't really got the um, gift of healing flowing but I do uh, flow really well in prophecy I've done thousands of prophecies so I can do supernatural things and I do mix with the supernatural of angels and Jesus and uh, different saints from heaven so I have got some sort of supernatural life but um, the great sense of awe how many, how many of us know a speaker that uh, are carried away with a great sense of awe about that speaker and about the way that they conduct themselves um, verse 44 I think um, I can't see the numbers and all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had well there's another difference wow we keep on coming against coming around differences 
and all the believers met together in one place, that was probably the temple, and they shared everything they had. Wow! Well, isn't that amazing? They shared everything they had. That's not one person own, owning, uh, you know, a uh, 7 Series BMW and a beautiful house and a holiday house. That's, that's like, a, and then another person at church in, in ripped jeans and uh, hand-me-down clothes and, uh, and, and living for week to week uh, in poverty and not being able to pay the bills. That's not one rich person and one poor person, but that's people sharing everything they had. It says, it says here, they, they, the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. Everything they had. They shared it. Wow! That's amazing! That's, uh, that's pretty novel, isn't it? Uh, living in a church where everyone shared. Oh, that would be amazing. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. Wow! What a novel way to live a life as a Christian community. Wow! Sharing everything they had. Selling property and possessions. Wow, that's like um, getting your Porsche and cashing it in and buying a cheaper car and getting the extra 50000 or $100,000 and giving it to the poor people in your church. That's an amazing concept. You know, the church, they, they want to go into revival and they want to uh, sweep the whole world with revival, but they want to keep their possessions. They want to keep their rich cars and, and their rich possessions. They don't want to sell. Well, when they came into this church, if they had property and possessions, they'd sell their property and possessions. And they were meeting every day. Uh, so they shared their money with those in need. They worshipped together in the temple each day. Right? So they all went to church. They went to the temple each day. Then they met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. There it is again. <laughs> they met each day at the temple. They went home to houses and they shared meals together. They sat down and shared meals together each day, every day, and there was much generosity. Wow! That's a unique concept. Generosity. Wow! That's amazing. And all while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all people. And each day the Lord added to the fellowship those that were being saved. Well, that's just a little picture of the early church. And I wonder, could we ever get back to that? Do, do we need to reach a stage in this world where things are coming apart, where financial institutions are falling apart and things are getting really stressful and Christians are losing jobs? Do, do we have to reach a stage where things are desperate before the Christians start pulling together and sharing their resources. I wonder, could we start communities or do they have to be cults? Do, do cults all start like that, sharing their resources and selling everything they have and forming community? Do, are we scared? Are we scared we can't have a proper Christian community without it turning into a cult? What are we scared of? Folks! Folks, they listened to the apostles' teaching and they applied it. The apostles taught for a long time. They met together each day. They shared meals together. They shared everything they had. They sold their possessions and shared. And there was no one with lack among them. There was no one that was poor among them. Everyone was brought up to a satisfactory level. I wonder, is this a church that we can live in? Is this a church that we can be part of? Does God want us back to this model of church? Does he want us back to this way of fellowshipping? I wonder, this is just a 15 minute video. 
I wonder, could you listen to me for six hours? I wonder, could you? Because this is how the apostles taught. And, and could you apply it? Is there something is there something you own that you could sell and give the proceeds to someone poor in your church? Could you sell one of your wealthy cars and donate it to the ministry, the, the finances to the ministry? Has this compelled you in any way to form a group of Christians that meet up each day and have meals and pray together and fellowship together? What a wonderful place! What a wonderful church! But what a wonderful place to gather to hear an apostle teach through the unction of the Holy Spirit. For them to speak for hours and you to be enthralled by what they're saying. For, for anyone who with sickness or illness to be healed by the apostles' hands and by miraculous signs and wonders. And everyone got together and everyone shared meals together. That's where you really get to know each other when you share a meal. And sharing meals meals together and sharing everything they had with each other so no one was in lack and amazingly there were more Christians being added to their community each day imagine that imagine living in a church living in a community where the more people were joining each and every day now that would be revival that would be tremendous these are just some thoughts. I'm not, uh, I, I, I hope that you haven't uh, got any idea of me that I'm sitting here with a condemning nature, that I'm trying to do a guilt trip. I'm just saying what's possible. Should, write in your comments, do you want to hear a two hour sermon just led by the Holy Spirit by me? Would you like to hear what the apostles used to teach and how they used to teach. I wonder, could you listen for that long? Would you be interested for that long? Jesus is the same today as he was yesterday. It's the same Holy Spirit that gives uh, inspiration to the words that are said by me or, or by an apostle. What do you want to do? Do you want to hear a two hour sermon? Well, I just commend you to listen to this and listen to this again. And look forward to the day when we're in communities. Because one day we're going to be in communities. One day the people of God are going to gather together in communities and they're going to share and they're going to go back to this model. And when the beast rolls out his mark of the beast, these communities are going to be safe and protected and self-sufficient. There is coming a day where this is going to happen, where you're going to sell your house and give up your possessions and join a community and share and everyone share. It is coming. There is a day. This isn't a figment of my imagination. This is something I've seen in visions and other people have seen in visions. It's going to happen. So I'm not just condemning. I'm saying look forward to the new church. There is a better way. God bless. Have a good day.